Floyd is back home. The Gophers got it done. They beat Iowa. It happened, and we're diving into it all today. Okay, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You are listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Rob, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we have a great one for you today because the Gophers go into Kinnick Stadium and they get the dub, the pig is coming home. We're bringing home the bacon. It's finally happened, and Gophers fans are having it every second of the day. Be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube so you don't miss any of our daily videos. And I am just still stoked, still riding high on this Monday, ready to talk about what happened this weekend. And it did come with a little bit of controversy. And now I don't know if I'd call it controversy, so to speak, but there are some mad fans on that Iowa side that, you know what, this game was up and down, roller coasters left and right, and it looked like the Gophers might have blown another big one late again, but it turned out not to be true. Now today's show, before we jump into all of this, into the nitty gritty details, into the highs and lows, into the bright win of this Gophers season, I do want to bring up our friends over at Prize Picks who bring you this show today. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college. Use promo code lockdown college to make a first deposit match of up to $100. Daily sports made easy at Prize Picks. All right, folks. So Floyd is coming home finally. It's been a long, long time. He took up residency over there in Iowa City, but it's time for him to come back home. It's time for him to come to Dinky Town, where he first initially went in this rivalry matchup with the trophy game at hand or the original Floyd, the actual pig. It all started here in Minnesota. That first win for the trophy for the claim of the winner of the pig came to Minnesota. That's why this is his home. Now, he might have taken up residency quite a bit in Iowa City, but he is finally coming back. It's a huge win for the program. I also do want to give a shout out to Coach Fleck because you know what? When you have things that continuously happen and it seems unfathomable and all these late losses that seemed like games that were playing in the Gophers' favor that they kept just not finding a way to get it done, sometimes it just adds a little bit of salt to the wound. You think about Kirk Cousins and his mu- or his uh, primetime game record and how people always bring it up and it just sits at you and it eats at you in the back of your head. And so I want to give him props because – to get through those situations and overcome the extra pressure, it becomes a bigger battle in itself than the actual game sometimes. I'm even thinking of the Lions and they can't win the division and they keep losing the Packers and the Vikings and they just can't find a way to get it done. And now they overcome that hurdle last year of the Packers and you could just feel something was different in that win. And now all of a sudden they're just running through the division itself this upcoming year and it feels like they have confidence and swagger about them. So hopefully Hopefully that will happen with this Gophers team. Hopefully we can get some momentum and hopefully it's the first of many, no matter if some say this one may be controversial. Now, why would people be saying that? It's because of the punt return touchdown that was then no longer deemed a touchdown. Ron Johnson, Gophers legend, said it best. It's the greatest play that never was because uh, Cooper DeGene, Punt return extraordinaire, secondary, a great secondary player. He is a huge player for this Iowa team. Uh, He signals with his arm, not necessarily a fair catch, but it was an invalid signal, which by the rule books is true. This isn't the first time this rule has been called, but you're not going to want to take that if you're an Iowa fan and you're thinking that this game is over, we just won in a late one. If it was flipped, if the roles were reversed, Minnesota fans would be just as upset. So I don't blame him for it, but it is technically a rule and the refs did get that call right. Now, what might have led to 
why they they had their eyes on this. Now people are talking about, oh, they didn't see it in real time. They just saw it in the replay. Well, regardless, Cooper DeGene was giving late fair catch calls throughout the entirety of the game. And one, he actually drew a penalty by kind of pushing off on Tyler Newbin, calling fair catch late. And Tyler Newbin gets a penalty, even though he didn't actually make the contact Cooper DeGene did. And he had been doing it all game and when he wasn't returning it. It was a late Real quick, fair catch. Or, so the refs definitely had eyes on his arms and how he was moving forward with that. It, it brought extra attention to him as a returner. So regardless, that kind of put a spotlight on that situation. He had short waves all game. On top of that, like I said, it that penalty highlighted it earlier in the game. So I think that there was more attention on Cooper DeGene with this one. But what was used as an advantage to call a fair catch late or to potentially draw penalties or get a return off in the last second turned into a backfire accidentally, controversial or not. Now, I would didn't earn it. If you look past that actual punt return, touchdown, non-touchdown, and what have you, they didn't do anything offensively in that second half. They had... 12 total yards when it came to net total yards in the entirety of the second half. They had negative three yards in the third quarter and they had 15 yards in the fourth quarter. Put those together, you're looking at 12 yards of offense. This Gophers defense turned it up and the Iowa offense could not do anything whatsoever. On top of that, the Gophers win the turnover battle with three turnovers to Iowa zero. I mean, those numbers make the difference in this matchup each and every year. And although the Gophers couldn't capitalize in scoring touchdowns and getting the score a wider margin to take Iowa out of that game, it still played a big factor on how this one finished out. Now, the only touchdown scoring drive for the Iowa Hawkeyes was given on a self-inflicted Gophers defensive drive where they had four or five penalties that just absolutely were dumbfounded and kept shooting themselves in the foot. It started off with a third and a medium and Deacon Hill runs, and uh, Danny Sturgow comes to tackle him, and then he pulls his face mask, face mask as well, getting a little overly aggressive, turns it into an extended drive, gives them a new set of downs as they continue to move the field. Then a few plays later, you have a pass interference call on Justin Wally, which brings them down to the goal line. Then a few plays, or it might have been the next play, you get an offside call, it moves them even closer. Then you got them going three, four straight attempts, with QB sneaks to get Deacon Hill in the end zone, and the Gophers keep stuffing it, but then Tyler Newbin, after the play, is way for far dead. Flicks the ball out of his hands, gets a penalty, and gives them a new set of downs once again from the less than one yard line. That drive was a self-destructing drive, and most times the Gophers can't bounce back from something like that. It takes them out of a game like this one, but that wasn't the case. That was the first half. They come out in the second half, and they absolutely respond. Joe Rossi's been getting a lot of heat from fans here and there talking about what happened to this defense, and we can't, we can't, uh, basically defend anything and there have been holes all over the place but they respond they get it done they make great second half adjustments we've seen great second half adjustments now from the defense in this game and in the louisiana game so i like to see them stacking that up especially coming out of a bye week overall the pig is coming home floyd is on his way back but there are things to learn from this game takeaways from this both positive and negative for the gophers moving forward and if we want to have success in this division if we want to get back on the right track if we want to get to a bowl game or beyond you have to take these these notes these takeaways from this game and start to capitalize on them fix the bad and continue to shine on the good we're going to jump into what those things are coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Athletic Brewing because it's time for your Game Changer of the Week brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Now, much like Dragon Kessich, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. The non-alcoholic beers that they make that actually taste good and like Dragon Kessich, who had every single one of the Gophers points this weekend, even bouncing back from a missed field goal to go on to hit four field goals throughout the duration of this game and keeping the Gophers on top. He was the game changer of the week and athletic brewing is changing the game. Like I said, they're the real deal. 
Their brews are great tasting and award-winning, and they've beat out full-strength beers in global competitions, so you know it tastes like the real deal. But best thing of all, no hangovers. And if you like the different flavors of beers, but you want to get away from the alcohol part and you want to have non-alcoholic brews, but have them taste good, then you can go to athleticbrewing.com and check out 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, golden sours, and much more. You can find it at Athletic Brewing Co.'s non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use promo code LOCKDOWN for 15% off your um, first online order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. At checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com, Athletic Brewing Company, and athleticbrewing.com in near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. <clears throat> all right, Gophers fans, thank you so much for listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. Now we got to keep talking about this Iowa game because it was a big one. You finally get the victory. PJ gets his first one. And I want to go back to Coach Warmoth with the Gophers. Long time ago, way back, but he started off, I believe, like one in six against the Iowa Hawkeyes, turned that around and was one of the last Gophers coaches to get a above 500 record against the Hawkeyes. Now, hopefully Coach Fleck can respond. This can be the first of many for him in his tenure with the Gophers to get on the right side of things in this rivalry and keep Floyd home. But let's talk about things that still need to be cleaned up from this matchup. The first thing is the easy throws. Now, I am still, I, I have support for Ethan Kelly McManus. I respect him. I have patience for his game. And I can see the flashes that he continues to add up and stack together. And it shows maturity of some of the decision making that he is putting together. But it's the easy throws he still needs to clean up on. And he knows this. He is going to do it. And that was one thing that the coaches talked about in the pressers leading up to this game, but also after is that Ethan is really, really grinding and working on the footwork within his mechanics and whatnot to really clean things up, help him get more drive with his ball, help him have more touch on his ball and everything like that. So he is putting in the work and the bye week did help him in that sorts, but there are still things to clean up. There were a few dirt balls in this game that you absolutely cannot do in the times that there were. Now, there were a couple of them on third down that should have been completions and those have to get picked up they have to they have to they have to but moving forward it wasn't just Ethan Kelly McManus there were big drops in this game uncharacteristic drops Corey Crooms had two really big drops in this game Brevin Spanford had his only target and it was a drop in this game those have to get cleaned up the confidence has to trickle up they have to get the swagger about them on this offensive side of ball now there were better moments within the play calling but it still was very very conservative. And there were silly penalties on top of that on both sides of the ball. So they have to clean up those three major areas, completing the easy throws, cleaning up the drops and cleaning up the silly penalties. But the Gophers weren't unscathed in this competition because they had injuries that popped up and we don't know the extent of what those injuries are. Zach Evans left early in this game and did not come back. Also, Darius Taylor, after his tightrope down the sideline to stay in bounds and get a very critical first down for the Gophers, I don't think we saw him again after that. And some people mentioned that maybe there was something with a hamstring, but we didn't get any confirmations of anything. So hopefully he is still good and can move forward. But there were critical moments in this game that we didn't see him. We saw Sean Tyler and even Jordan Newbin came in a little bit. So hopefully he is okay since this was his first game back. Hopefully Zach Evans is okay because we really, really want to see that young duo come together and be something special in this running back room. And I still think, aside from the injuries, aside from some better choices here in this game, I think there's still some major issues with the offensive play calling in this one. Now, Daniel Jackson bailed out some of the opportunities here for the Gophers, created a lot, created on his own, and I absolutely loved it. But there are plays where guys still have to execute better. Like I said, the skipped balls, the big drops, they have to execute more because even though I'm still thinking this is a little bit too conservative of an offense, there were opportunities on these third and shorts and whatnot where the Gophers had the right read. They put the ball into play and it should have been converted, but it wasn't because of skip balls, because of drops and things like that. So it's hard to fully evaluate this offensive effort, even though it was very conservative and none of us really like that very conservative. That is very much the vocal 
the vocal judgments on social media is that people want to see more aggressive play. And I don't blame you. I do too, especially on the offensive side of ball. But with that, there were improvements. There were. The opportunities were there. The openings were there. We just didn't always capitalize capitalize on it. So hopefully that starts to clean up a little bit more as we continue to move forward. But we do have to see more creativity, plain and simple, because if we have so many RB injuries, we're going to have to find ways to get the ball to our playmakers because people are going to start to try and take Daniel Jackson away, plain and simple, especially having a big game like this. Now, it seems like our offense on a lot of fronts, not every play, not every passing down or anything like that, but it seems like we have things that are like read one, read two, and then you're stuck. If you can't get something to your first two reads, then all of a sudden there isn't a check down. There isn't something easy to get. And so then that's when you see kind of either a panic or Aiden takes off into a scramble, but the guys are on his tail because the offensive line might have let one through. It, that's where I, I want to talk about creativity and needing something else. It can't just be two reads and then we don't have anything and we're kind of stuck. Now, hopefully... I'm just missing something. Hopefully I can go back and watch some of this and see, oh, actually there was a check down here. We just missed it. But I don't think that's the case. Now, I'm again, not saying always, but I think we just need some more opportunities, some more creativity, some more diversity to the route trees of our pass catchers in order to get easy, simplified touches. Because when you look at when they actually get the running back involved in the pass catching game, every single time it's happened this year, I think there's been a positive play on every single attempt to our running backs in the pass game. Now, I could be wrong on one or two attempts here or there, but majority of the times that the Gophers get the little swing routes out to their running backs, it has been very, very productive for them. Now, we haven't seen a real true running back screen from this team. We haven't seen a tight end type screen from this team. Having more diversity in those routes and concepts could make this so much better. It could make it so much easier for the quarterback and keep the defense true and not being able to bite down because – if they're playing off, trying to take away the Daniel Jacksons and the Corey Crooms, and you hit them with something underneath and let those guys create, you get a 12-yard chunk play, and then they have to think about it as they continue to move forward, and that opens up the backside of the field as well. So hopefully we see more of that coming down the pipeline, but I am not sure what we'll see from that. We're going to have to see it moving forward. Now, absolutely, like I said, got to clean up on the skips. One thing I did want to address from this game, is everyone seems to want to talk about the second down play. It was almost second and goal, but it was like from the 11 yard line. It's second and nine or something like that. And everybody talks about the corner route to Je Daniel Jackson saying, why doesn't he throw that corner route to Daniel Jackson who is open? but it's not as clean as people make it seem. The truth is, I think many are echoing that sentiment because the announcer said it on the Big Ten Network or wherever you were watching the game. But the thing is that if you take a look at that play again, or if you watch a replay, or if you can get a hold of the All-22 film, you will see Cooper DeGene is sitting right underneath that corner route. Now, it might look like there's space there, but that throw has to be perfect. Perfect on a dot to be able to complete that for a touchdown because you've got the safety still coming, trailing behind. That opening is there, but the underneath is what is more scary there because Cooper DeGene is a playmaker who absolutely has many turnovers over his career with this Iowa team. And it looks like they were prepared for that corner route, knowing that that is a route that the Gophers like to run in the red zone because they put it on tape time and time again. A Daniel Jackson corner out in the red zone is something the Gophers have done often. And it seems like they were baiting the Gophers into making that play and trying to take a a jump at that ball, trying to make a game flipping interception or turnover and take away momentum from the Gophers. But Ethan smartly didn't take that shot, knowing the factors of the win, knowing the factors, maybe seeing him sitting underneath and seeing it is three. That is Cooper DeGene, and he is a playmaker. So then he rightfully just kind of gets out of that play and lives to see another down. The play after that was the one that was maybe a little bit needs to be cleaned up on third down where he just kind of lofted the ball to Daniel Jackson on the far left side of the field on more of a fade route, but it looks like it got caught with the wind a little bit, thrown overthrown maybe a little bit and missed on that. That miss is bigger in my opinion than the actual corner and not taking that corner route because Cooper DeGene was sitting underneath. I just had to get that off my chest because it seems like everybody wants to run with that as a reason for, oh, 
Ethan doesn't have it. I'm just, I'm not there with you. I'm not there with you. I think it was a good decision on that one. But my final thing on the quarterback here is regardless of all of this, it is okay to support your young quarterback and still want more from him. Those two statements can be true together. You can still support him and want more from him. But the people who solely throw out box score stuff or clearly don't watch the games or scenario scenarios or situations like the one we just talked about. Right now, Ethan has probably been pay, playing at like a C grade right now with flashes of A and B work and flashes of DNF work. But now through this back half of the season with winnable games all over the schedule, we need the A and B work to shine through more often as we continue to progress. But that also includes the need and the opportunity to show it with well-timed play calling and with the opportunity to continue to pass. So also on top of that, not having dropped passes, which there have been many of this season. So overall, I just want to calm down the narrative that, oh, he, he's not it. He's not it. We don't know yet. There's still a lot to be seen with this young quarterback who has shown flashes and shown struggles. And I want to put examples out there of where it has played out, where these fan bases, where these programs are like, he's not the guy, and it comes back to bite him. Look at Indiana. Fans complained about Michael Penix Jr. Injuries aside, they still complained when he was on the field. Look at him now with Washington. Heisman candidate. Balling out two years back to back. Look at Auburn fans who absolutely dragged Bo Nix in his time down there. He made mistakes. He struggled. But look at him now with Oregon, having the time to develop, having the time to build into it all. Look at uh, Oklahoma with Spencer Rattler and absolutely tore him a new one. Now, he's the only thing giving South Carolina a chance with winning games in the SEC. So, Wisconsin fans, Minnesota fans alike have fully dragged Graham Mertz to Madison and back from Minnesota. That is how bad fans were to Graham Mertz, who had flashes but also had major struggles. And now he's the He's thrown for almost 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions, 76 completion percentage for Florida that is winning games. So patience isn't fun, but sometimes it's necessary. Now, we're going to wrap this show up with a little bit of talk of where everything stands in the West. That's what's coming up next here at Locked On Golden Gophers. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Prize Picks because if you like daily football, daily fantasy sports made easy, then boy, do I have the thing for you. You can test your skills over at Prize Picks this football season in the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 in just a few taps. And on top of that, you've got quick, quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of player and stat types to choose from at Prize Picks, which makes them the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. Simply press over or under on yardage totals or touchdowns for that week, and you can have up to 25 times your money if you win that statistic. So overall, if you looked at this Gophers and Iowa game, I was wrong. I said I would take over on a lot of those passing stats. Ethan Kalik Manis, 116 and a half. He got the over. Deacon Hill, 99 and a half yard pass yards, over. Uh, Daniel Jackson, receiving total, over. Nico Regani, oh, receiving yardage, over. I was wrong. I was wrong. I would not have done well this weekend, but we learn from it and we keep going. And you can take your shot over at prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for a first deposit, first time deposit match of up to $100. You put in 100, you match 100, you got 200 in your account. 40 and 40, you got 80. Either way, you can double up your first deposit up to $100 by going to prizepicks.com slash locked on college or use promo code locked on college at prizepicks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Gophers fans, we're going to wrap this one up talking about the West because it is an absolute crapshoot. Wisconsin pulls out a narrow victory against Illinois. Minnesota upsets Iowa. Things are all over the place. Things are all over the place. But it's nearly a few late plays in that Iowa or that Illinois Wisconsin game. And all of a sudden, things are shifting back into the favor of the Gophers and controlling their own destiny. But right now, we need a couple things to still happen. We need Iowa to lose another game this season to another Big Ten conference opponent. Their Big Ten schedule is no longer very, very difficult. 
but there are opportunities for them to drop it, especially if their offense continues to struggle. So if Iowa can drop another one, and if Wisconsin, as long as they lose to Ohio State, if Minnesota goes out there and wins the games that they should get out there and win, the Illinois, the Michigan States, the Purdue's, if you go out there and you take advantage of those wins, even if you lose to Ohio State, as long as Iowa loses one other game and Wisconsin loses to Ohio State this weekend, you're talking about the Gophers and the Badgers playing head-to-head to potentially control the fate of the West, depending on how the rest of some little tiebreaker things shake out, but the Gophers can find a way to control their own destiny potentially come that final week. They just have to go out there and win these games that they might be favored in or be very close to favored in moving forward, which is why the offense has to step up, which is why it has to get cleaned up. You can't have the penalties. It's why that we're excited about the defensive adjustments in this game, but that has to continue moving forward. It can't be what we saw in weeks three through six. You have to come out and play defense like you played in that second half, moving forward each and every single game. Now, if you take care of business at home, the next two home games, Michigan State, Illinois, you win both of those, you're bowl eligible. Now we're not freaking out about bowls anymore. We're talking about, okay, we're in there. Now let's turn our eyes towards Purdue and trying to continue to be in that West conversation because you still can be. This I will win was huge. Not only do we bring Floyd back home, but you put yourself back into contention. It's also why I'm very still disappointed with that Northwestern loss, but we have to move forward regardless. In the end, we could look at that game being the make or break once again for the West. But right now, we still got games in front of us to try and get it done. But like I said, you look at these next two home games, you got to go show out, you got to take care of business, and then you're bowl eligible on top of still in that West contention. Then you go to Purdue and you get that game, you're looking at seven wins already. And you're looking at a rivalry matchup at home against a Wisconsin team that's still struggling and has an injured quarterback. You go and take that, you're looking at another eight-win season, bowl eligible, trying to get another nine-win season, and it comes down to, dang, we should have won that Northwestern game, and we would have been a double-digit win season, but regardless, you can still fight for the West. It's not in our favor. It's not in our control right now, but it is not impossible. But you have to take it game by game, and the next one is Michigan State coming up next week, 2.30 at Huntington Bank stadium. So eight wins is not out of the question. Minnesota can still get that done. The Ohio State game, look, Ohio State's the real deal. I'm not going to count us in that one right now. I haven't seen enough flashes and bright spots or offensive firepower to keep up with a team like that. But the other games on the schedule, each and every single one of them is still winnable. Now the Gophers get the win versus Iowa finally. And regardless of the roller coaster, the up and downs, the crazy play that may have been controversial or not, Floyd is coming back to Minneapolis. And that's all that matters. A win is a win. And PJ Fleck got the monkey off his back when it comes to the Iowa Hawkeyes. And hopefully he can keep that trend going. But now we turn our eyes to Michigan State and trying to go 1-0 and in the Michigan State season. Row the boat, Scotty, my go-gophers, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.